Hello everyone, my name is Kara Catherine. I am in Capstone and my project is on stress in college students due to COVID-19. So the presentation will include a few things, including the introduction, topic breakdown, the background, key terms and search terms, previous studies, gaps in research, the purpose, aims and objectives, methodology, instruments, and then a work cited at the end. So the introduction, um, this is my research question, which is, is there a greater negative impact on mental health caused by COVID-19 protocols between college students that are in class learning or remote learning in the US? So this is uh, important because COVID-19 is fairly new to us. It has been around for a year, um, but when I started this topic, it did happen earlier. Um, so when COVID was new to us, um, so this also has impacted many colleges across the United States. Uh, it's also changed the way students learn because most students who go to class are now online learning. Um, this has increased stress and anxiety and depression and other psychological factors, um, whether they're either in class or online. Um, this is a public health issue because students in college um, their community has been impacted and it's a lot to adjust to and it's a constant adjustment and recently they've talked about having uh, classes go back to uh, in class so now they're transitioning back um, so now they've switched over twice. So the topic breakdown this has to do with um, the outcomes and um, exposure in my research question, um, and then psychological distress, distress has to do what affects the population. So negative mental health impacts, this includes the anxiety, stress, depression, um, and other things that may influence those. The COVID-19 protocols, which is the mask mandate, social distancing and cleaning procedures, as well as what colleges are requiring from them. Um, there's just a whole list of them. There's also the psychological distress. This also goes towards the anxiety, stress, and depression, but there's an added, to, uh, added component to it, which is the lack of motivation, unclear instructions, fear of academic or employment loss, and of course, catching the virus. So some background on this topic is that there is a 71% chance of indicated stress in the, during the pandemic. 91% um, of students said that their health and their health of loved ones is a concern. There's also the 89% that says loss of concentration and motivation and 86% had decrease in social interaction. 89% of students who are studying in class said they experienced increased stress and 81% of students who moved to online classes have experienced increased stress due to the pandemic. So college students around the world have had it completely changed the way they've continued courses. Many have turned to remote learning while others are continuing in class learning. There's also hybrid learning, which is both in class and online learning. They switch between it. Some are, you know, during the week, um, it depends on which week or they do certain days. Um, and again, everything has changed and they're uh, talking about changing it over in the future. So some search terms that I used to find my uh, research was I used the um, website Sinal Complete in PubMed. Sinal Complete mostly focused on online students or remote learning students. In PubMed, I was able to find more on in-class learning um, students as well as online. So these are some of the terms that I used. Key terms that I was looking for in the articles, um, this is definitely, these are some like key points that I wanted to look at. Um, if they didn't have any of these terms in them, I knew it kind of wasn't the research that I was looking for. Um, so these were just a few of them. Some other ones popped up, like if they use certain scales. Uh, I know a few of my um, sites or um, research papers that I use, they were using different scales, which um, had a strong background to them, but that was more individual to the research. So my first study that I focused on uh, had to do with e-learning crack up and um, the fear of academic loss. This was about students that had to move to online um, who were initially in in class learning. So this increased the uh, impact on negative mental health and because the higher stress levels associated with new learning style. Um, they use the Kessler psychological distress scale, which I thought was a very strong scale to use. Um, and they didn't do just like a survey that came up with questions on their own. Um, 
They, their research objective was for the government and policymakers to identify the mental well-being of college students. Um, so it wasn't just to college, just to the colleges themselves, but to the governments. Um, and then they found that um, e-learning crack up and fear of academic loss were the biggest influence. And the fear of academic loss was actually higher than the e-learning crack up. So the second study was, uh, the purpose was to measure students' high stress response to COVID-19. They used two different scales. One was the patient health questionnaire and the general anxiety disorder. Um, so the general anxiety disorder did focus, have a bigger focus on anxiety and patient health actually had to do kind of like a, a the whole round of mental well-being. Um, so they're looking at what concerned the students and this uh, led to finding an increased rate of depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts in the college students. The third study was to assess the students in class and how the protocols were affecting them. Again, it was hard to find um, research on in class, but this was a pretty good uh, interview study that they did. Um, they did, I believe in um, New Jersey. Um, so their aims was to see what, how the protocols that were in place, so this could be wearing the mask or um, cleaning procedures that they had to follow along, even social distancing on campus um, and how that affected them. So some major findings was the need to develop measures that will intervene and prevent increased stress um, in the college students. The fourth study was um, to focus on remote learning students and their levels in, of anxiety, depression, stress, and somatization. So this was uh, a big cross-sectional uh, study. It was over a few different colleges. They didn't name what colleges they were, but that there was multiple in them. Um, so this found that students had a harder time focusing and about they were more worried about finding cleaning products, catching the virus, and just how their lives were gonna be outside of school um, and how that affected how they were uh, performing in class. Um, so they found that there was a greater need of support with the students' well-beings. The fifth study uh, was to figure out if students in class would safely continue face-to-face -face learning with all precautions in place. This was a very interesting study because it wasn't on students particularly. They actually did a full-scale um, stochastic agent-based model. So it was a simulation model, which I found very interesting because no matter um, how many protocols they had in place and if everything was perfectly done, it would not fully stop the uh, virus from spreading through schools. Um, so, because just because of how people are in and out, the cleaning procedures, everything. So um, they thought that, it, that in class, during this time in class learning would not be the best and would not be the safest for the students. Um, they found that any procedure in place with proper quarantine isolations and students being totally um, fine and following along, that it was still a high risk environment. So some gaps in research. So the first study um, was mainly to get a response out of the government, which has not happened yet. I did follow up on this study and they still don't have anything extra on it. Um, and their topic was a little bit broad um, and because they didn't really describe what the fear of academic loss was, or, I mean, you can kind of assume throughout reading the paper, but the e-learning crack up was definitely a little confusing. Uh, the second study was conducted through the Texas A&M University. Um, this was to compare all this college, but they compared this to all the students in the United States. Um, study three was also a small sample, but compared multiple colleges together, but also compared it to the whole United States. Um, so it was done with the local schools. I think with study two and three, um, and even study number four, um, they tried to compare everything to a broader scale. So they did a smaller research in one or a few smaller schools, and then they were trying to make this big um, comparison to the whole United States when every school is different, every state handles things different. We have different mandates per state. Um, I think that's just, it's kind of a interesting way of doing it, but I think that if you get more studies together, different, um, play, different schools from different places, I think that would work really well. Um, but small schools, you know, studies can only go so far. And the fifth study was based off of a model they created, although very interesting. Um, it was a simulation, so it you know, could, you know, it's not always um, fully accurate. 
So the purpose of the study um, was to determine if college students are having a higher level of stress, if they are in class or if they are remote learning. I think uh, in class and remote are two big variables. Um, and I know there's hybrid, but that kind of mixes it together. I guess that's a, it's also good to focus on that to see how students are doing with the hybrid. So the aims and objectives that I lead was by May of 2021, we will conduct a survey to 25 college students about their stress levels. Um, also, while changing to online learning, by May of 2021, we will conduct a survey to 25 college students about what causes increased stress in in-class learning. And then by May of 2021, we will conduct a survey on a total of 50 students rating their stress levels for in-class and online surveying <laughs> learning. Um, so I think 50 college students is on the lower end of what I'd like to reach, um, but I, I would like to see if I can use the snowball effect of how I'm going to reach them, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so in the methodology, we had a correlation study, um, and I wanted to focus on qualitative research, but I might get a little bit of quantitative research um, just with my survey because I ask a few questions, and I might be able to compare and contrast the um, in-class learning to remote learning and maybe get a little bit of a statistic out of it, but it'll be mostly obser uh, observational study. Um, and the plan is to use the variable of online learning and in-class learning and compare them to see if there's a negative mental health impact to one more than the other. And the design was to compare and contrast two or more variables. So the research that I'll be um, using is to find out similarities and differences between the two variables. So the in-class and online uh, learning and how one is more impacted by the factor being the negative mental health impact. So to continue, my sampling frame is going to be colleges in the United States, but I'm going to uh, focus on Western Mass or Massachusetts as a whole. Um, so this is going to be through convenient sampling method. I am a college student myself, so I will be using this and I'll be asking colleagues of mine who go to uh, maybe the same school. I know a few people in other schools as well, and uh, I'm going to try to use the snowballing effect with this as well. So I'd like to, you know, ask them to spread this survey where they can all answer it. Um, and I want to do this uh, by sending it out either by email or by text. Uh, right now, it's hard to give it in person. So I'm going to just try to stick to the online method. If I do, um, I will still use the in-person if I am able to. But by April of 2021, I do want to have all my data collected and kind of end there with all my um, data points and collect that so I can start writing my research paper. So this is part of the... Um, this is what I'll be using. This is my survey. It currently has seven questions on it. I want to get to about 10 questions. I have a little bit more I'd like to add on and look up to see if there's any more points that I'm missing. Um, so I have a little bit of leeway to what I can take out and move. Um, some of the things that I put on there is if you're in class or online, so that way I can split up the survey. That's for the, st the statistical part of it, um, which is just a very small part. Um, that also includes question three, which is how you would rate your level of stress. Um, so I can get a couple numbers out of there, but there's a few short response questions. Um, so such as like, has your, um, or do any, does anything concern you? Um, what is your increase or do you have an increase or decrease of stress during the pandemic? And just a few others. Um, I, definitely a short answer. I don't want to take this too long, um, but something that all the college students are able to kind of get off their chest if they need to. Um, definitely if they think that there's a change that might even help in the future. And be, um, a part of this I need to add in, which was the informed consent. So I want the informed consent to say, by continuing the survey, you are providing your informed consent. This is a student project and the survey will ask you general questions about your experience as a college student during the pandemic. This will ask you questions about your college, their COVID-19 protocols and the changes in your mental health. Thank you for your participation. And that will have to go in the beginning of the survey, of course. And this is just my work cited for what I use. And if you have any questions, please let me know.